Welcome back to 10 on YouTube. No, my friend did not come over today. Anyways, uh, the video I was planning to do, if my friend, if I forgot about my friend or he didn't come over, would be that, uh, we take a look at a series of movies, Blu-ray and DVD, that's on Blu-ray and DVD that are over there. So well, let's look at them, shall we? Get the goggles off. Get these DVD and Blu-ray movies right here. And here they all are, right here. Give you a little bit to um, guess what all these films have in common. Figured it out yet? No? Well, it's uh, they're all directed by the genius filmmaker Robert Zemeckis. Yes, in case you don't know, I am a die-hard fan of filmmaker Robert Zemeckis. And in case you don't know who Robert Zemeckis is, well, he's the director of all these amazing films right over there. And uh, one right here, which we'll talk about. Uh, I mean, I don't have all of Robert Zemeckis' films. I still have yet three films to get, and I'll explain what those three films are when I'm going to get to them. But <clears throat> for now, let's talk about all of these films. Shall First, we? I Want to Hold Your Hand. I Want to Hold Your Hand is about these four teenagers, or just these four young adults or whatever. Uh, they try to get into the hotel that the Beatles are staying at, because this takes place in 1964, around the time when the Beatles were huge in America, and this was when they were first arriving in America to appear on the Ed Sullivan Show. And, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a comedy, it's, it's just a straightforward comedy with some slapstick and such, and it is an absolutely great film. I'm, let me tell you, I'm going to be saying a lot of positive things about many of these films, so just warning you now, I'm not going to say I have much criticism for most of them. But anyways, <clears throat> but I Want to Hold Your Hand, damn great film. It's really engaging, it's really hilarious, and it's a really great debut for genius filmmaker Robert Zemeckis. Next up, Used Cars. Used Cars is about this salesman, is about this, uh, used car salesman, obviously, named Rudy, played by good old Kurt Russell, um, where he's trying to, it's pretty much a, it's a, it's a black comedy satire where he wants to be a politician, like, uh, I, I don't remember who the pol what type of politician he wants to be, but, like, he, he's, he, he wants to really get out of this used cars job, and before he's able to actually get get the money to be able to become a politician, his, his, um, his boss dies because of, because his, his, his boss, Luke, his boss dies, um, during, um, in, in some sort of a havoc that, uh, a guy who works for Luke's rival brother, um, I don't remember his name, I think Randy or something, but anyways, um, he, um, he gets, he, he gets the order to get Luke to die due to heart attack, because, you know, the excitement, the, the complete and utter ha um, chaos that happens when, 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 uh, Luke is, that Luke is a part of gets him killed due to, a, due to a heart attack. And, uh, the thing is, is that, uh, Rudy is trying to do everything he can to make sure that he, get, that he, that he it pretty much shenanigans happen, pretty much, and not to mention Luke's daughter, who has who Luke hasn't spoken to in years, uh, finally comes over um, to where Luke is at, at his used car set place. But obviously, but like, well, like you know, Luke, Luke dies, and but the daughter doesn't know that yet, so Rudy grows attached to her. Basically, it's um, pretty much a film where a lot of characters lie to. Put it in Robert Zemeckis' words when he once explained it about the film. This is a hilarious film. And this is how you do black comedy right. This is how you do satire right. Some certain people need to take take notes. I won't I won't name anyone, but uh uh, uh yeah, I will uh just say they need to take notes. But anyways, <clears throat> The thing is, is that it's, it's a really engaging film. It's hilarious as all hell. It's a really, it, it's, 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 a, it's just, it's just a damn good film. It's, it's well edited and directed too, which makes sense because you know Zemeckis directs it. And 
it's it sadly like I want to hold your hand it bomb in the box office sadly and and it really sucks because that because used cars and I want to hold your hand are both damn great films actually the first two films Steven Spielberg ever executive produced so you know next up the Back to the Future trilogy I don't think I need to explain what the Back to the Future movies are about because I can imagine a whole lot of you know well anyone who does watch my videos would know that back to, what what back to the future is so i'll just say that the first film brilliant one of my favorite films of all time like it almost it just cut it just cuts from it's just cut from the top 10 from my top 10 favorite is number 11 but still it's an absolute masterpiece and the sequels are pretty damn amazing too i wouldn't say they're exactly as amazing as the first film but they're still both absolutely amazing they they have a giving story stories hilarious moments memorable characters um really really great special effects and uh um it's just it's just a damn fantastic film like i absolutely adore this shit oh the tri this trilogy one of my favorite franchise movie franchises of all time right up there with toy story next up who framed roger rabbit I don't have to go into the explanation of what this film is about also, because I'm sure anyone who watches these videos will definitely know what Who Framed Roger Rabbit is. And this is a masterpiece too, and a really engaging story, really intriguing um, mystery, even if it is pretty obvious a little bit, but I think the film does a good job of trying to hide the fact of what the reveal is. In case, I mean, it's pretty obvious what it is, but I don't want to spoil it for you in case you haven't seen it. But the fact that it's a really, it's really funny, obviously, typical for, for Robert Zemeckis film that has comedy. <clears throat> um, amazing, amazing behind the scenes work with, for, when it comes to what the pe what the people behind the scenes did with the film. Like the animation, spectacular. The attention to detail is so impressive and wonderful. The characters are memorable. I mean, Jessica Rabbit, I mean, I don't get turned on by hot, sexy people, but really, the thing the thing with Jessica Rabbit is that she's really well written, and I really love her because she. It's, it's, well, it really pisses me off that Disney would rather just dismiss her and and just n try to change her or whatever because oh, sexy equals problematic, trying to appeal to the feminazis. And don't worry, I know it's the difference between feminazis and feminists. Just know that. I know that. And you should know that, too, in case you don't. But anyways, it's just that Disney is so fucking stupid for doing what they're doing to Jessica Rabbit. Because the whole point of Jessica Rabbit is that she... Is that she... That there, that, that there is a lot about Jessica Rabbit beyond her looks. And she's so well-written, too. She's not, she's not a perfect, flawless, bland stereotype with very little personality unlike many of like many of many of today's disney live action female characters or hero 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 lines or whatever. heroes you know what i mean but yeah it's just my point is is that the characters are memorable and well written it's really funny really engaging and i just love seeing all these different type of famous cartoon characters in this in in this world like if i had the chance to be in this world i take it in a second even a, less than a second a millisecond because honestly i mean I, I i am a huge animation nerd i am an i am a animation geek i love animation i also love comic books too and of course movies but Animation is unbelievable. Like it, it's a beautiful medium that, when done well and done right, it's a, it's absolutely amazing. Next up is Forrest Gump. Oh, I definitely don't have to go into any detail about what this film was about. Forrest Gump. Let me tell you, this is my second favorite Robert Zemeckis film. We will get to my first favorite soon, it, and it's probably not what you might think. But this is what Forrest Gump. It is truly enthralling. It is memorable. It is amazing. It is just heartbreaking. 
Like, so, there are quite a couple of moments that I don't cry at, but I do d definitely feel an emotion. And Tom Hanks just wins and just deserves that Oscar for his for his performance in this film. And Robert Zemeckis definitely deserves the Oscar that he got for Best Director. And I'm really glad he did win that award because Zemeckis is my favorite filmmaker. And it's just... I just adore the shit out of Zemeckis. Like, I, I think you could say I'm the biggest Robert Zemeckis fan of all time. Not in a way where I know literally everything about him. That would be fucking creepy as shit. And not to the point where I have a lot of memorabilia from Robert Zemeckis films, though. I am starting to change that. I am starting, I am starting to collect more stuff with by Robert Zemeckis. But it's just that I have such a passionate love for Zemeckis. When he makes films, like, he's a lot, he's done a lot of wonderful films. And Forrest Gump is one of his best, which is saying a lot. It really pisses me off that people don't give him the respect he deserves nowadays. Or most people don't know, who the hell, don't know who the hell he is. Hell, when I started talking about him in the beginning of this video, or even when you looked at the, uh, when you looked at the title of this video, you, I can de guarantee you had no, had no idea who Robert Zemeckis is, because... <sighs> He's not a household name like Steven Spielberg. And admittedly, I love Steven Spielberg. He is an absolutely amazing filmmaker. But at the same time, people are more willing to see garbage by Michael Bay or M. Night Shyamalan or whatever. More than actually good stuff by Robert Zemeckis. So I'm not going to act like everything Robert Zemeckis touches is gold. Turn, turns into platinum. But quite a lot does. Especially when he's working with Tom Hanks. As we'll see with two other films on, on in, here. But yeah, I love Forrest Gump, and, and, I'll, and some of the things I love about it is that the techno the uh, the groundbreaking effects, admittedly at times, are pretty dated. But for what they were, they were done really impressively. And also, you know, it's really amazing how Forrest Gump was part of all throughout all these his historical moments in America. And you know, that, that Vietnam scene is fucking intense as shit, you know? Next up is Contact. Ow. This film, I probably had to explain what it's about. It's a, it's about this, um, so it's about this, um, it's about this, for lack of a better word, I guess, scientist named, uh, Ellen, a um, Ellen Arroway? No, uh. Let me just check for a second. Uh, Ellie Arroway, I'm an idiot. Ellie Arroway, where she discovers alien, alien tech, where she discovers some sort of alien, um, <clears throat> some sort of alien contact, and she and many other people tried on uh, in a, on Earth or just in America, really, go to try try to um do everything they can to try to communicate with them and try to really see what they want or what they what they're saying or whatever and it's a and and along the way it has some pretty philosophical moments it's not like i'm not shamlon where not like i'm not shamlon shit where it's so forced and heavy-handed and unnecessary and stupid and if that treats it like it's so deep and philosophical when it's not at all that the philosophical stuff in this film are actually important they actually ask the it actually asks important questions and doesn't have it doesn't exactly have the doesn't have exactly have perfect answers to to them if they if any of them have any answers at all and trust and the effects are amazing the acting is amazing the story is amazing um and you know, just, uh, Jodie Foster. Jodie Foster does an absolutely incredible job. And Matthew McConaughey is damn great, too. I love, I do like Matthew McConaughey very much. And I like Jodie Foster, too. James Woods also is funny enough in this film. Though he doesn't really say anything, you know, funny. Because, you know, this is a dramatic film. Next up is What Lies Beneath. This is a horror film about, um... Uh, um, Michelle Pfeiffer's character, who is who, uh, I forgot what, what Michelle, uh, I forgot what Michelle Pfeiffer's character's name is, but like, she um, she discovers something that's just a checkered. She just she discovers a um, a really disturbing like 
incident that happened to do with Harrison Ford's character, in which both Harrison Ford and Michelle Pfeiffer are married in the film. And they have a daughter who just went off to college in the beginning of the film. Um, pretty much, it, it's, it goes with one, it, it's, it's pretty much a film I don't, it, it's, it has some twists and turns, and it is a really good film, really great film. I don't think it's really as great as most of the other Zemeckis films I've talked about, but it's quite a damn good film, though. It's got, it, it really, it's really well edited, it's really intense at times, it has some great effects, great acting, especially from Michelle Pfeiffer. Like, she does a damn good job here. Um, <clears throat> the story's pretty intriguing. I mean, it's, def I wouldn't say it's definitely not perfect, but it's still a very intriguing story. Um, it's, uh, it's, just, it's just a really good film. Next up is Castaway. I'm sure some of you know what Robert, what Castaway is, but in case you don't know, I'll explain that it's about a FedEx employer named Chuck Noland, I think it was Noland, um, played by Tom Hanks, where he gets, where he survives a plane, a huge, a very, a very intense plane crash in which he ends up desert, stranded on this deserted island, and he gets stuck there for five years trying to find every, try, every way to try to get back to civilization and along the way he has um he comes he he he, he um he has this uh he he he, he bonds i say bonds because it's well you know well i, I don't you know never, whatever um pretty much he he bought he talks to this volleyball man wilson now wilson doesn't talk obviously to the viewers but Chuck can Chuck can understand him because you know he's going batshit crazy. Now this is an, now this is an amazing film and uh, obviously, but like it's absolutely brilliant. Like it is really impressive, really amazing, really intense, really sad, even at times funny. And this is probably one. This is one of my favorite Tom Hanks films, which is saying a lot because Tom Hanks is my favorite actor of all time. Anyways, um, it's just that Tom Hanks went through a lot and did a lot for this film, and he deserved that uh, Academy Award for best uh, for best actor. He honestly deserved it more than uh, Russell Crowe for Gladiator. I mean, honestly. Oliver, Ellie, baby boy. Ellie. Next up is the Polar Express. I think many of you know what this film is about. It's based on a book, a children's book from the mid-80s. And actually, this is my favorite Robert Zemeckis film. And it's it is way better than everyone gives it credit for. It is engaging. It is beautiful to look at. The music is amazing. The, stu the characters are memorable. Even the ones that aren't the most likable are still really funny. Um, I have to know it all, kid, obviously. <clears throat> um, it's really well shot, and I know motion captures kind of get the bad rap, but honestly, I mean, why does, I mean, why does the Polar Express get so much bad rap for using motion capture animation, but yet James Cameron's Avatar gets so much praise for quote-unquote groundbreaking effects, when really, the, that Avatar, that John, James Cameron's Avatar was just mostly motion capture, and yeah, so groundbreaking. I mean, that film sucks anyways, but anyways, The Polar Express, that had an actually engaging story, and that film has all motion capture and did IMAX, IMAX 3D and IMAX screenings before Avatar. So, yeah. And it's nowhere near as bad as everyone says it is. It is a fucking masterpiece. It is brilliant. It is faithful to the original book. It is so funny when it needs to be, and it's... And a, a whole lot of the time, it's such a timeless film, because it actually, because it, it, does, it doesn't attempt to try to be hip and cool and modern or whatever, unlike numerous other animated films over the past two decades that somehow get more fucking praise than this masterpiece film. But I digress. Next up is Beowulf. This movie, Beowulf, is based on an old epic poem from, like, medieval times, and it's pretty much about Beowulf... Um, pretty, pretty much Adventures of Beowulf. Like, I can't exactly explain it without 
really trying to go into too much into detail, and I don't want to give it away in case you haven't seen it and you want to see it, but it's also it's another motion capture animated film, just like the Polter Express. And the next film that we'll talk about is motion capture animated too. But we'll get to that film and get to that. But for now, let's talk about Beowulf. It's it's a really, really good film. I really like this film. I do have my issues with it. Like, I know this the film changes quite a few couple things, or like a few things or so, from the poem. And I can kind of understand the frustration to that. But just because they change things from the, from the original source material doesn't automatically make it bad. I mean, look at Gene Wilder's Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. That's not a faithful rendition to the book, but it's still considered one of the greatest films of all time. And I still have yet to fully see it. I know. Don't attack me, please. I still have yet. I do want... I have seen a big chunk of it, but I still need to see like, the entire thing. But regardless, I digress. The thing is, is that Beowulf, it's, it's really intense. It's really intriguing. And it really explains... It, re it really... It really, um, it really has a really, it, it really shows, I can't, it does a really good job at explaining how, how, how certain Beowulf and other characters, so, so supposed heroes, are fighting monsters when they say they're, they become the monsters themselves. That's really intriguing, and I really do like that they do that, I tackle that very well. Um, it's also, and for a PG-13 rated movie, it gets really fucking gruesome. Like, Jesus Christ. I miss this PG-13 rate movie. I miss this version of PG-13 movies. I mean, I'm sure we still get that every once in a while nowadays, but we don't get it as much as we used to. And PG-13 used to be pretty freaking gruesome. At least mostly until the Marvel Cinematic Universe came in. And don't worry, I love the MCU. I adore Marvel. I love Marvel. I love the shit out of Marvel. They are... I, my fourth favorite film of all time is the, the MCU film Avengers. Well, The Polar Express is my third favorite film of all time. But anyways, I digress. But yeah, Beowulf, it's a good film. It's not, it's not amazing, it's not it's 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 got its it has its problems but it's still a really good film regardless plus you know uh it's got some scary imagery too might warn you that now up next is the jim carrey version of a christmas carol funny you know this is the second christmas film robert Zemeckis has directed and it's funny because that film it, it's all the castaway also at, takes place during Christmas in the beginning of the film too. I think Robert Zemeckis has such a love for Christmas, and I can totally understand because I love Christmas too. But anyways, you will obviously all know, or any of you who watch this damn my damn videos know probably knows what exactly what a Christmas Carol is about. So I won't go into detail about the story, but. I will say it is probably is one of the most faithful renditions, uh, one, one of the most faithful adaptations of A Christmas Carol. It is quite intense, quite, it is really amazing, really intense, really intriguing, and Jim Carrey does a damn good job. Like, those accents he uses, he uses on all the characters he voices and motion, and does motion capture for sound really legit. And, uh, the motion capture animation is, of course, still amazing, too. And the fact that this is a Disney film, that it goes pretty dark, is pretty amazing. really wish Disney would do that more nowadays, but, I mean, they're starting to get back to that. I mean, I heard Disney wants to do more. Some Disney executives want to do more, um, adult-oriented content for Disney. And I know Disney's supposed to be the family-friendly studio, but I still love the Disney part. Some people at Disney want to do more adult content, because, I mean, Disney's done it in the past, and usually they do it pretty well. So I could totally see this going, I could totally see this doing amazing, maybe, hopefully, as long as it's done well, you know? But yeah, Christmas Carol, damn great film, wonderful film. One of my favorite versions of Christmas Carol. Not my number one favorite, though. My number one favorite is the contemporary version of Christmas Carol called Scrooge, which stars Bill Murray and directed by the late, great Richard Donner. That was even better. And The Muppet Christmas Carol is my second favorite, probably. Up next is Flight. Next returns to live action for this for this film, and um, pretty. if in case you don't know what it's about, it's about uh, this... It's about this um airline pilot named Whit Whittaker, played by the wonderful Denzel Washington, where he, where he successfully um lands a plane that went out of control, 
and it's pretty fuck. It's also pr another pretty intense um, plane scene, but it's pretty much Whit Whitaker did it did that while getting drunk, while 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 being drunk, and he's trying to do everything he can to try to uh, <clears throat> break his addictions, and it's an it's a brilliant fucking film, like. The perform Tanzel Washington does wonderful, and it really shows how how important it is to get get out of that addiction. And I and and, and I really love how the film tr doesn't portray it as like oh it's easy, but like no, it's really hard. I understand it's pretty fucking hard to break certain addictions. I can imagine it's really fucking hard. <laughs> but yeah, uh, I probably one of my favorite scenes in a Rob in Robert Zemeckis films period is in this movie. In the scene where Whit Whitaker at his ha at his like farmhouse or something like that that his father owned, um, he take he takes the time to dump all the alcohol and throw out all the bottles of alcohol that he has in his in that farmhouse or whatever, and he uh, <clears throat> and he um he fucking um god damn it um. He, um, and, you know, he just throw he throws all that shit out, and I really, and that really felt satisfying for me, as, as someone who cannot stand alcohol and illegal drugs. <clears throat> but anyways, but yeah, flight, engaging, in, engaging, dramatic, beautifully shot, intense, and such wonderful, wonderful writing. Up next is The Walk. This film is based on a true story about this about this French guy named of this French artist French artist named Philippe Petit, played by Joseph Gordon Levitt in this film, who plans a coup to go to to America in New York City to hang to hang a high wire on top of the twin towers. This this, this takes place in the seventies, by the way, and walk on the wire and. Believe me when I say this is probably one of the best edited Robert Zemeckis films, and it's be it's really funny, it's really engaging, and the actors do a great job. Joseph Gordon-Levitt really nails it, and the effects on the on the um on the twin towers look so damn real, like you really feel like they're actually there. And I remember when this film came out, I really wanted to see it in IMAX 3D so fucking badly, but I couldn't find anyone to see it with. If I remember correctly, I wanted to. See I, if I remember correctly, my dad was willing to see it, but then he got busy or something. This was before my dad died, by the way, so, you know. But anyways, and, uh, I don't know how close this, 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 I don't know how close this film resembles the actual events, but regardless, it's still an amazing film. Anyways. And now, there's Allied. Allied is about uh, it takes place during World War II, where um, a man played by uh, where uh, I think I, I don't remember what he is, but I like he's he's played by Brad Pitt, and he's part of the war of World War II, and he gets he gets married to this suppose who so he gets married to this woman played by Mar um God damn it um woman named played by Mar Marion Cotillard. And, uh, and while they're married and they have a child, um, the people who Brad Pitt's characters work with, um, he gets, I think his character's name is Max, but anyways, he, um, he, he gets notified that, that, that he, um, he, people he works with gets suspic suspicious and think that Mar Mar Marie and Cotillard's character, um, is a German spy. And Brad Pitt's character goes out of his way to try to prove it's not true. And I know this sounds like a typical setup that's been done before, and it is, it is. But they do it, but Zemeckis does it really well. The ending I did not expect. Like, I was, I was not expecting the ending that I got. And this is an R-rated film, so it gets pretty gruesome at times. But it is a really great film. Um, um, and, and it's, it's really intriguing for the most part. It's action packed. It's intense. I mean, I don't think there's as much action as the um, as the trailers let let on, let on to be, but it's 
I still feel like there's quite a lot of action. I think this one problem I have with the film is that a lot of the sets in the film are mo are animate are CGI animated, and while a lot of the, and while I don't have that much of an issue with it because a lot of it a lot of those sets do look really look look really real. I do I can tot I can see why people would be put off by that considering, you know, wouldn't it be more authentic to actually make sets. I mean not all not all the sets in the film are CGI animated, but quite a lot of them are as far as I'm concerned. And finally, welcome to Marwin. Oh boy. Uh yeah, um, okay, so in case you don't know about this film, it's a, it, it's also based on a true story like The Walk where this guy, where this guy, this crossdresser named Mark Hogancap gets the, again, gets beaten the absolute shit out of by these, um, by these bigots because Mark, who was drunk, ended up at accidentally revealed that he wears women's, um, shoes. And, uh, pretty much, it pretty much shows him trying, the rest of the film pretty, the most of the film pretty much shows him trying to, him trying to pretty much, well, it 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 focuses on two things. It, it 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 on some points it talks about um Mark trying to be. It shows on him trying to be, trying to recover from that incident that from that terrible incident, and sometimes it focuses on motion capture animated sequences where Mark, uh, is 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 uh is lives in this little village with these women who are. Based on who are part who are who are, the, who are based on characters that are at, that are, are in real life in the film. Now, the thing is with this film, I don't hate it. I don't hate it, but I don't exactly like it that much either. Like to me, it's a decent, it's a halfway decent film, but it's got its major problems. I mean, the action's pretty good, and the effects are wonderful, typical for Robert Zemeckis' film. And Steve Carell does really great for what he can, and it it is pretty intriguing at times. But Mark Culkincap can be really fucking creepy. Um, there's a couple of unfunny moments, which is unlike Zemeckis. I really will never understand like what Zemeckis was thinking with that. But I also never understand the Back to the Future reference in the film, which I won't give away in case you haven't seen and you want to see it. But let me tell you. The Back to the Future reference is forced, stupid, unnecessary, but yet is contributes is part of the plot, and it just makes no sense whatsoever. But, and it's not not to mention the fact that, well, you know, it's just that it's not exactly a good film. It's pro it's honestly to me the only dud in Robert Zemeckis' directing filmography. So, yeah. Now, for the point zero 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 one percent who who I might actually be watching these, these videos, um, no, might in case in case you in case you didn't for those who know might might have noticed that I'm missing a few films and I am. There's Romance in the Stone, which stars Michael Douglas and Kathleen Turner and Danny DeVito as well as other actors. Uh, Death Becomes Her, which stars Meryl Streep. Um, Goldie Hawn, and Bruce Willis, and and Zemeckis' newest film, The Witches, which is a remake based on the Rodal book, and it stars uh, Octavia Spencer, Anne Hathaway, Stanley Tukey, however you say Stanley's last name, I'm, I'm sorry if I said it wrong. Um, but let me give a quick rundown of those films. Romance of Stone, it's about... Uh, this about this about this no, romance novelist named uh, Joan Wal Joan Wilder, where she try where she try where she tries to rescue her, where she tries to rescue her sister in Colombia, to deliver the, these bad guys a map. All the while coming across this guy named Jack Jack T. Colton, played by Michael Douglas, and they form a bond. And that is a, that is an absolutely amazing film too. It's it's. It's really action packed. It's really funny, and the ca and Michael Douglas and Kathleen Turner don't spend the entire film arguing and bickering. They do quite a bit of that, but they do spend. There are still quite a few, quite many moments where they still bond and talk and just spend time with each other and get along and such. It isn't just one note bickering and bickering and bickering every second whenever they're with each other, but. 
but it's, it's, but, and, and you know, their chemistry works really well, too. It's also beautifully shot. I heard, I remember Robert Zemeckis said that this was the hardest film he ever had to shoot, which is, which must have been a real pain in the ass for him and other, everyone involved. <clears throat> but, um, yeah. And Danny DeVito's character is hilarious, too. Big shocker, I know, for Danny DeVito. Though, I must... Damn it. Though, I must warn you, Danny DeVito's character is a little problematic in today's day and age. I didn't notice that until the last time I watched it with my friend. But... Uh, but, yeah, he's a little problematic, and I could I could see why some people might get turned off by a parts of his character. But he's still a really hilarious character, regardless. <clears throat> but yeah, that's Romance in the Stone. Uh, Death Becomes Her is about, uh, is about, is about this aging actress named, uh, Madeline Ashton, who steals away Goldie Hawn character, um, totally forgot Goldie Hawn's character's name, but she steals her, her, See, she's she's had the last. She's done. She's really done it again. Where she steals Goldie Hawn's character's newest fiance, Ernest. And this time, his name is Ernest Manville, played by Bruce Willis. I, I, I should mention, Madeline Ashton is played by Meryl Streep. <clears throat> and of course, Goldie Hawn's character, no Helen Sharp. Her name is Hel Goldie Hawn's character. Her name is Helen Sharp. But anyways, uh, she go she goes through a very very important plan to try to get rid of Madeline Ashton. And, uh, and of course it involves this, and of course this, this, um, uh, this involves this age, this age, this, um, invincibility potion, it's like you drink it, you never, you never grow another day old, and you, um, and you get, uh, and you can, and if you get hurt, it doesn't hurt, and, but you have to fake, but sometime soon you have to fake your death or else people will, you know. It's, it's complicated. It's really complicated, but it's a really good, it's a pretty good film. It has its major flaws, but I still like it regardless. It's still wickedly funny. It's still really intriguing for the most part, at least. And, you know, it's just, it's just a grand old time for the most part, at least. But then, and then there's the last film. The Witches, which is a remake of the original 1990 film, which, of course, is based on the Rodal book. <clears throat> and I'd be lying if I said that I absolutely loved The Witches remake by Rufus Zemeckis, but I still liked it pretty well. It's still a pretty good film. I mean, it's I do, I do agree it's inferior to the original film from 1990, but the remake still has its has a lot of uh, quite a bunch of pluses. A, a, a quite quite a bunch of merits going for it too. I mean, at least it's not a retread. At least it's not a retread of the original film, unlike most of live most of live action Disney remakes. Oh boy! All right, y'all are going back. Oh shit! 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 Come on! Come on! Come on! Here we go! Here we go! Here we go! Here we go! Oh. Uh, sorry if you can't see this. If my sorry that my leg is blocking the shit. Damn it. But yeah, um, that's pretty much it. And thanks for watching. And I apologize if this video is longer than the other vlogs I recent vlogs I've done. But still, I love Robert Zemeckis. He's an absolute genius, and I'm really excited for all the upcoming product projects he has. In case you don't know any of those projects, his next film is the live-action Pinocchio remake, which I know Disney has a bad reputation for li their live-action remakes, when it comes to that at least. And I do agree most of them are terrible. But, I have, and I do agree that all the upcoming ones, I don't have any faith in. But this one, the Pinocchio remake, I have faith in. Because Robert Zemeckis and Tom Hanks, as you could tell, they really know how to really make a great Hollywood film. <clears throat> other films they have, other films Zemeckis has coming soon are Ares, a science fiction thriller, um, um, a Crosby, Stills, and Nash documentary, uh, a tuned out TV, a TV show, a live action animated hybrid show for HBO Max called Tuned Out, um, that features many different famous cartoon characters. 
Um, what else is there? Uh, um, well, I can't think of anything else, but like, it, oh, well, there's, there's this book, there's this book that Zemeckis has been planning to adapt for ages now called The Journey of Edward, The Miraculous Journey of Edward Tulane. It's based on a book, obviously, and it focuses, it, it's, it's been in development for ages now, but I'm not sure if it'll get made, but anyways, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Thank you for watching. I will see you next time. Bye-bye. Take care. You are my anchor.